Welcome to the workshop at the Concord Free Public Library. My name is Christy and I'm here today to show you how to safely operate the workshop's Cricut machines. Let's start with the safety notes. Cricut machines are generally pretty safe to use, but you should be careful whenever you're changing cutting blades, which can be sharp. In case of injury, immediately call 911 and notify staff. A first aid kit is also available at the workshop's front desk in case of an emergency. Okay, let's get making. Cricut machines come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but they're all designed to do the same thing, to translate digital designs into precise, computer-controlled use of physical tools, including blades, pens, embossers, and more. Fun fact, this is the exact same kind of technology called CNC, or Computer Numerical Control, that's used to run drills, lathes, and mills to mass-produce metal and plastic parts in factories. The Cricut just simplifies and shrinks that process down to something a little friendlier for everyday projects. The exact tools, work area, and compatible materials will vary from model to model and tool to tool, and you can find a full compatibility grid on our website at cfpl.info slash Cricut compatibility. But rest assured we have all the tools you need to make use of a range of Cricut features, including cutting, scoring, engraving, embossing, perforating, foiling, and drawing on everything from cardstock to balsa wood. No matter which Cricut machine you're using, you'll start by plugging it in, opening it up, turning it on, and then connecting to it with a computer, tablet, or smartphone. Some Cricut machines connect via USB cable, while others can use Bluetooth. In this video, we'll be using a Cricut Maker 3 and connecting it to a workshop laptop via USB. Now it's time to open up Cricut Design Space, which is installed on all workshop computers or available to download for free at design.cricut.com. If you're using one of our computers, you can either use the workshop shared Cricut account or log into your own personal account. Once you're logged in, check the top right corner of the screen to make sure that the software is set to match the model of Cricut you're planning to use. If it's set to something different, just click open the drop-down menu and find the machine you are using. Now select New Project. Welcome to the Cricut Workspace, the part of the software that lets you map out your project for the machine. In the sidebars, you'll find a number of shapes, lines, fonts, and even whole pre-designed templates that you can add to your project. Just keep in mind that some features may be limited to premium accounts, and others, like licensed designs, may require additional fees even for premium users. If you'd like to purchase additional content not available in the workshop shared account, you'll need to use a personal account to do so. Today we'll be using a feature that's free for all users, importing your own design. From the left sidebar, select Upload, then choose an image file. I'm going to use the workshop logo, which was created in an outside image editing program. Now Design Space asks us how complex the image is. Since mine is only two colors, black and white, and very high contrast, I'm going to choose Simple. Now click Continue. Now it's time to tell the software which parts of the image we want to cut away. The program defaults to a wand tool, which is good for most projects, but you can also choose an eraser or crop tool or auto erase if you're using a premium account. With the wand tool selected, I'm going to click on all the white parts of my image so only the black logo text is left. Then I'm going to switch to the eraser tool to remove the URL, which I think will be too detailed to cut out of the cardstock I'm planning to use. Now I'll click continue. Now the software will ask if you'd like to save your image as a print then cut image or a cut image. I'm going to choose a cut image, which is good for most projects, but you can read more about print then cut features on Cricut's website if you're interested. You can give the file a name if you'd like, then select upload. Now the image is saved to my uploads. To insert it into my current project, I'll select it, then click Add to Canvas. Now I can use the handles on the edges of my design to resize it to fit the mat I'm using or make more precise adjustments using the options at the top of the screen. If I wanted the machine to do something other than cut my design, like draw, score, or perforate, I could select it, then pick from the options in the Operation menu at the top left corner of the screen. When I'm happy with my project, I can choose Make It from the top right corner of the screen. Now the software will ask what kind of cutting mat we want to use and the type of material we're planning to cut. This option tells the machine how much pressure to apply to the blade and how many passes over the material to do. Too many or too few can cause tearing of the material, failure to cut the whole way through, or damage to the cutting mat, so try to choose the option closest to the material you're using. You can view all the materials compatible with the machine you're using by selecting Browse All Materials. I'm selecting Medium Cardstock. Now the software will let us know what tools we'll need loaded into the machine for our project. The workshop has a wide range of tools available to borrow from the front desk, but if for any reason we don't have a tool that's listed here, you can find alternative setups for your project in the Edit Tools menu. 
If you need to change a tool, just undo the clamp in the indicated holder, insert the tool, and refasten the clamp. Next, we can load our cutting mat. Choose a piece of material large enough to cover the cut area of your project with at least a half an inch room allowance on each side. Peel the protective layer off your mat and press the material on, lining up the edges with the top left corner. Now feed the mat into the slots on the front of your machine and press the top edge of the mat gently against the bottom of the rollers. Depending on the machine you're using, it will either feed in automatically or you'll press the arrow button on the top of the machine to feed it in. The machine will double check that your material is loaded correctly. Then you can either press the play button on the machine or the go button in the software, depending on the model you're using. This is the fun part. Just watch the Cricut do its thing. When the loading screen finishes, press the arrow button on the machine or the unload option in the software to remove the mat, then click finish to return to your workspace. Gently peel your finished project off your mat using the spatula, pick, and scraper if necessary, taking care to remove any leftover scraps from the mat, then replace the protective cover sheet. Congratulations, you're now a train maker. If you want to learn more about everything our Cricut machines can do, visit help.cricut.com for more information and tutorials direct from the manufacturer. The workshop is made possible by the generous support of the Concord Free Public Library Corporation, a nonprofit organization supported by makers like you. Learn more about all the corporation does to make our library awesome and how you can help at cfplcorp.org. And if you just can't get enough making, be sure to check out the workshop's full library of maker tools and upcoming classes and events at cfpl.info/workshop. Bye-bye.